What is up everybody? Welcome to the RT Clinic. Today's video is going to be about one of these things. You may have seen them on the wall before and not know how they're used, but today we're going to go over it RT Clinic style. Are you ready? Cut to the intro. So this is what we're looking at today. We have a suction regulator right here. We have a suction canister and we have some hoses going in and out and you can see all these different things here. Now this can be quite confusing because right here, that's the oxygen outlet. As you see that goes in there. We talk about that in another video. There's air and then behind this one we have medvac or vacuum so it looks like it goes in real similar to these but these devices won't go in to the wrong hole which is really nice so medvac that's where this is going to go let's look at the back of this so this is the regulator attachment you're going to see this area right here this is where the vacuum is going to pull from and then this piece right here and you can see in this case, it's a little bit loose. That's a common problem that we find a lot, but that's actually what's gonna latch it into the wall so that it won't come out. So this is gonna go in similar to a flow meter and it's gonna lock in place. And then there will be a switch above it, a button that you'll push and it will unlatch off of this and allow it to come out. So it's not gonna press, push it out with the power of a flow meter, but it's in, as you can see, a little bit loose and then this button on the top in the back allows you to remove it from the wall and so this is a standard sometimes people will call it a gomco um, it can be changed in many different ways we see we have continuous off and intermittent on the top usually in most cases if you're going to need this in a pinch you're going to want it just on continuous and that's how we're going to test it and then this is going to show you the pressure so generically it shows you green yellow and red but some things you need to know if we're in a situation where we have to suction for like an intubation or somebody's vomiting or something like that we really want to turn this up pretty high everything you read says you want to keep it below 150 actually 150 to 200 is kind of the max but there are definitely times we'll turn this on full vac for a patient that might be vomiting or have a lot of mucus or we need to suction out the airway so that we can intubate the patient so you'll see it turned up to full vac in those cases now you see if i change this it does absolutely nothing right now because it's not plugged into the wall so i'll plug it into the wall and then show you how to, to test the regulator so if, if we're going to look at just actually testing the regulator so it's in the wall i can put it on continuous and you can see it pulling vacuum but that's not the actual I'll turn it off here just so it's not super loud, but that's not the actual vacuum it's pulling. You have to occlude this port and that will tell you where it is. So if you're looking, and let's say you're taking care of neonates and you're gonna be going 80 to 100 on this vacuum, you'll wanna occlude this and then adjust. However, that's the max vacuum. So it will never go higher than that pressure right there that we have set. So that's really important. So if you're gonna go low, you're gonna set it there. Most of the time, you're gonna want it around here if you're using this in a situation where you're gonna need vacuum quick for an emergency. So we're gonna probably go in the red somewhere, but just so you know, the continuous for an emergency is gonna be over here. And then if you're doing intermittent suctioning or suctioning from an ET tube for a neonate or PED, you're gonna be over here on this side. But as you can see, this tells you really nothing because it looks like I'm on 75, but if I include this, I'm actually on 275-ish. So this is the way you tell your actual pressure you're giving the patient, not by an open circuit. Intermittent suction will suction intermittently, obviously, but this is usually hooked up to an NG tube. But to test intermittent suction, let's say they want, let's just give a situation, let's say they want 50 of suction. So then you would put it on intermittent, you would test it on full, or continuous test it right there okay we're about 60 or so let's say we want to be let's say we want to be 80 so we go there that's occluding it and then 
hook it up to the NG tube, put it over to intermittent, and now it will not go above what we have set at 80. So that's your intermittent suctioning. That's how you set it. You can hear it right there. It kicks in intermittently. A lot of times those will be hooked to an NG tube. So that's how this works. Continuous. If you're in a pinch, you need to get some stuff out of the airway, suction, whatever's coming out. Low intermittent is going to be, you're going to set it by going to continuous and then you're going to go over, put it on intermittent and it will never go above that. If you set on intermittent and sit there and be like, what is this? How long will it take? It might take a while. Oh, there you go. You can see that it occluded and popped up. So it could take a while though. Anyway, that's the Gomco. This kind of looks like a PR2. If you know what a PR2 is, that's old school respiratory stuff. Put it in the comments below that you know what a PR2 is. This kind of looks like a very small version of a PR2. Let's go over to the canister next. So I removed the canister next and it came off the wall. This is a bracket and a blue hose here. Now these are reused, including the, this one hanging off the bottom. This is a reusable tube. This will hook actually up to our regulator right there, our suction regulator, our GOMCO. I'm going to call it a suction regulator. So that's going to actually pull it. And you can test this. It's going to pull suction through this tube into this large one. And then this blue tube is going to go into the disposable canister. So on a canister, a lot of times they'll come from materials and they'll look something like this. Actually, they might actually even have the top off of them. Oh, this, these are just sealed tops. So if the tops on them or off of them, this is the way they may come. So this is the, what they make now. It's kind of like a liner, but what it is, it's all sealed up. We've got some holes on the top. And so they kind of make it nice. They've got these different things that fit over these, but you really have to know what you're putting where. So if you're ever in question, the one in the center, it says vacuum on it. You can see it. It's kind of difficult. But you could be like, well, what, where does this thing go? The best way to look is go on the inside. If you see that right there, you see that filter? And this is it turned upside down. There we go. You see the filter? What that's actually going to do is that, you know, that's always where the vacuum is. So if you go to a different facility and they're looking at the suction canister, look for that filter. That's where the vacuum hooks up. If you do it the wrong way, and it can easily be done, and you hook vacuum up to the patient side. So let's say... Uh, this actually make it so it actually doesn't fit anymore But let's say this tube the blue tube comes off and you're using another tube and you hook it up to the wrong side It will suction, but it's, it will only pull whatever you're doing vomit or mucus or whatever It'll pull it back to this filter and it'll stop and it'll be like, okay It's suctioned for like three seconds now it stopped. It's because you have these two hook wrong It's a great way to troubleshoot it, but they make it now So it's kind of dummy proof so that you don't make any issues by hooking the up to the wrong tube. Now, one thing that's going to definitely cause a problem is they come from the factory like this. If I just go and put it inside this casing, and I don't know much about it, and I stick this in the center, that's correct, that's all where it should be, and then I take my, my longer hose, and you're going to see that it's going to come in a package, it's going to be kind of rolled in a little bit of a circle like this, and then I usually open up side the package and leave the package on it, just makes it look cleaner so that and this goes on here where it says patient side so we put on the patient side and then i hook this up now i seemingly i have everything the way it should be but i'm missing one key point and you'll know it right off the bat all the respiratory therapists know it because they've run into this icu nurses everybody's run into this before you go in you start fumbling with this crazy suction because you never need suction slowly. You're always in a rush when you need suction, and that's for sure. So what I'm looking at, this is on the wall, and this might be hanging something like this, or maybe this is hanging over the top of it. So all the hoses are here. I could go like this. This goes on the patient side. Patient. This goes over here. Should have been hooked up already, but it's not. And then I turn on my suction, and you can see right now the regulator's reading about 50. And I said, I'm going to clue this to see what it is. And I clued it. And as you notice, there's no change over here. There's a problem with the system. Well, there's a, it's, this is very, very common because out of the package, this port right here is always open. You need to close it. You cannot use this until that is closed. So you take this large one, put it on there. 
You want to really look like you know what you're talking about, like when you pull a suction out, close that one off. Because if not, you're going to suck air through here and it's not going to suck through the tube like you want. So, goes down, in, that's occluded, and now, and you can see my pressure go up. Now I was on only on 80. Another way that you can test it, and so like we tested before, where we occluded this area right here, but we can occlude right here and we can see our pressure. So let's say the last patient that was hooked up to this regulator was on low intermittent suction. Now I need continuous and they'll say, turn the suction up. Then you occlude, increase until you get something right there. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now that's a lot of pressure. Now you wouldn't want to put this on something that's an NG or anything like that. But if you're in a code or some kind of situation like that, then that is an appropriate amount of suction. If you go and you want to test this, because it looks like there's pressure on there, let's say, let's take something off. So let's, un let's unhook that. Suction sounds like it's on, and I would go to do this. See no change at all? I've got a problem in the system. So I start from the very beginning. Not there. Not there, there's good. I'll go up here. Oh, that's not connected. There we go. So, and then it comes back down to here. You gotta follow it and trace it all the way back. Now there's a really interesting little piece back here, which I don't know if I'm a fan of these or not, but it is a little key and it turns it off. Look, nothing like that. I'm occluding, I got nothing. It's just holding that pressure there. And then if I open that up, there we go. Now we're running again. So this little key on the side is another thing to look out for. But if you're not getting suction, you always wanna first start at your regulator and then work your way all the way to the patient. Usually your problem is gonna be somewhere in the lid. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. So that's how you're gonna do it. Increase your suction and then turn it off when you're done because it's really annoying when it sits there and runs. That is how you run suction with a regulator. Now, a couple different things you want to look at. Now, if we're going to go dispose of this, so let's say, uh, obviously I have gloved hands on, but we'd pull this off. I would take this little guy here, occlude this, take this little guy here, occlude that. This piece comes out, that is 100% sealed up, and that gets put in uh, a red bag of some type. So then, you can wipe down the rest of this, and then you're gonna get another one, a clean one, from storage and put it into here. Now, one thing you definitely don't wanna do, this piece of tubing looks very similar to that piece of tubing, right? So a lot of people, well-meaning, will say, oh gosh, I don't want that suction, I don't want that one to go on another patient. And I get what you're saying, but remember, nothing actually gets to the patient because of that filter right there. Everything's pulled through that filter. So nothing gets cross-contaminated. So what we're gonna do is make sure this stays on at all times because if you are in a pinch and you got everything set up, everything's set up appropriately here. We got this, you're like, man, I watched Jimmy's video. I remember everything that he told me to do. We have all this stuff going. We're all good to go. And you go to do this, you've got nothing. And unless you're walking around with a piece of rubber tubing in your pocket, this is gonna be a hard piece of tubing to find to fit between here and here. So that's a really key part. And it's a good part of setting your room up is looking and making sure that that tubing is there. I hope that helped a little bit. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the likes and the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe below. I'm hoping to put out some more videos. These are ones that can be used for respiratory therapists, nurses, interns, PCTs, anybody in a hospital, uh, because it's really important we all work as a team. So comment below too, if you've ever had a situation where you've came into a room and this was a absolute hot mess because it's actually happened to all of us before. And 
you know, that's what makes us. We run into those errors. That's what makes us better because we know next time we walk by our IC rooms before they get patients in them, we make sure these are set up right. Or if we have to run in a code to grab a setup, we know exactly what to hook up. So if you've never been in that situation before, practice it before you're in the middle of a code or an emergent situation. Because when a patient vomits, they need their airway cleaned, is something that needs to be done right now. So it's great to have this hooked up and you'd be invaluable as a new employee. If you are in a code and somebody says, we need suction, usually they'll say that and not direct it to anybody because nobody wants to go get it because it's funky to set up. If you learn how to set up, you could be a great asset to the emergency team, ICU team, ER team, or whoever it be in helping our patients when they need suction quickly. So. Like, subscribe, and I will see you later. Well, what's up? I got some bonus footage. I kind of forgot about that little device that attaches to the end of the, the hose for suction. This is really important. Uh, this is rigid. It's got an on-off switch on it, as you can see here. So what is it called? It's called a Yankower. So, but people will call it multiple different things. I'm just telling you right now. Tonsil tip is the easy one. It's kind of Americanized. And if you're from the back hills, we call it a yonker. So they ask for the yonker. This is what they want. But this is used to actually direct that suction, usually upside down, around the tongue, down into the oral pharynx to clean that airway out down here before we go in for intubation. Also, it's great. It's got a large tip on it. And you see some cool things about the tip. It actually... If it becomes occluded with chunks here, you got whole ports on the side for it to, to suck it in. So in the, if the sides become occluded with chunks, then you can pull it in the end. So it's got multiple um, ways to get, mitigate the chunk issue if you're suctioning vomit or mucus. So you'll notice those tips like that. But tonsil tip, Yankower, or your good old-fashioned Yonker. I'll see you. Yonker, 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 okay.